A federal budget is passed due, and so far, Democrats and Republicans seem to agree on just one thing, avoid a government shutdown. The temporary budget we're operating under expires this coming Friday. The two sides remain far apart on a permanent plan. Republicans are calling for $61 billion in cuts to discretionary spending. Democrats say any more than $10 billion is too much. Congressman Peter Roskam has been chomping at the bit to discuss this issue, and he joins us, a Republican from Wheaton, and he joins us in Washington. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Dane. What is the latest on a budget compromise, or is it almost certain we're looking at yet another temporary spending bill? Well, House Republicans were joined by Democrats in, in the House in passing over a short-term solution that was a little over a week ago. And the Senate has really failed to act other than putting another short-term uh, proposal forward. The Senate tried to take up a longer-term continuing resolution that would take us to the end of this fiscal year at the end of September, and they couldn't pass anything. So House Republicans are clear. And the irony is President Obama is calling on all sides to be involved, and he sent Vice President Biden to Capitol Hill last week as the lead, administra or the lead negotiator for the administration. And then the very next day, Vice President Biden left the country. So I think there's a great deal of turmoil. What I'm hearing in my district is people want to see us do thoughtful cuts that help remove obstacles to job creation, and they want to keep the government open and running. There's a big difference, though, between $61 billion in cuts and roughly $10 billion in cuts. Is there room for compromise here? Well, I think that the Senate needs to come forward w with a plan. So far, we've seen Senator Durbin that has drawn a line in the sand, but the Senate hasn't produced a product for a long-term uh, a long-term solution to this. And this is, remember, last year's work. What we're ultimately needing to do is to turn the page to deal with the budget for 2012, which is what Congress was elected to do. And then we've got some other conversations about how we move forward to try and create more energy in this country in light of the fact that gas prices are now knocking on the door of $4 a gallon, and we've got continued turmoil in the Middle East. There's a great deal of, that, of work that Congress needs to do, and my attitude is, and I think most folks, is let's get about this and let's get this done. Well, in fact, how do you, how do you fix the budget problem, then, if it's just being extended on a piecemeal basis? There's really no permanent fix we're talking about right now, correct? Well, what we're talking about, to your point, is continuing to cut, and there were $61 billion in cuts that you mentioned a minute ago that House Republicans um, advocated and passed, and then we were able on a short-term basis to take that number and do $2 billion in cuts per week. So there was $4 billion in cuts that passed that the Senate agreed to. Now it looks like, because the Senate hasn't done its work, we're going to be in a position to do that probably again. But at some point, it becomes absurd. At some point, you need to come up with a real plan moving forward. And my belief is that the American public says, look, Congress, work together. The government got bloated over the past two years. Trim that down in, in the same way that families have to deal with it and, and get on with the, the business of governing and enough with the game playing. Are you comfortable with that $61 billion figure or do you, as a moderate Republican, think that may be going too far? Is that being pushed by the right wing of the party? Look, the $61 billion figure is a thoughtful number, and there was a great deal of effort that went into that, and the, the House spent four days debating that in a very open process, and ultimately came to, came to that number. There is an urgency to where we are right now, and if we don't get this together, you know, the federal government is now borrowing 40 cents on the dollar. And if we can't come up with $61 billion in cuts that make sense, then we're in a world of hurt. And I think we can do it. And does this mean that inevitably that you're going to have to raise the ceiling on the debt cap, which is what, about $14.3 trillion well, right I now? The debt ceiling is a conversation that is coming that the country is going to have to wrestle with. We've got to wrestle with a budget for the year 2012, but certainly we've got to get this deal done uh, as it relates to funding the government at an appropriate level, the level at which we can afford, um, and that makes sense for our long-term prosperity. Because remember, this is all about getting the government in the right relationship to the rest of the economy, and I and many other economists think, or many economists think, that you've got to lower the amount of spending in order to remove obstacles to job creation and that is what I'm hearing over and over and over 
in my district in the west and northwest suburbs. All right, Congressman, thanks for joining us this Sunday morning. Good to see you again. Thanks, Dane.